you know, it's it's incredible. It's, it's a real shame Paramount had to come along and fuck it up. <laughs> real shame. Uh, real that, shame. that'll be an episode on its own, I think. We're not going to get into it now <laughs> because, you know, I just take it out of my brain like I'm in Harry Potter. Today on the Nebulous Entertainment Podcast, we're going to be discussing game worlds. Yes, you heard it right. The universes that were created by different studios, they're just places for players to escape. I know I've escaped through them. I know Eric, uh, he lives more in the fantasy world than he does in the real one. So, But they're crafted with the highest level of care, attention to detail, and definitely passion as well. So we're going to give you our favorite, our top five. We're going to count down. Um, and basically give a little background as to why we love each one. So, Eric, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, for my number Perfect. five, I'm going with Rapture from the Bioshock franchise. Uh, I recently replayed those games, and I can still remember the first time playing it with my cousin, other than the fact that we were petrified of the world because it was terrifying. Uh, we were constantly in awe of like how thematically solid it was. Uh, they have it's that you know underwater city, but they nailed the sort of Art Deco '40s aesthetic and um, like everything down to the floor tiles and little decorations in the world were just awesome. So that one I think is the detail. Yeah, that was one of the first right. games where I really. I would say I, like, I really recognized like set design and art direction being a real like solid foundation to the gameplay. So that's my number five. How about you? All right. So one of the games, this is probably one of, one of like the last games I've played in reality. I haven't, I haven't played uh, in a while, but uh, Elder Scrolls and Skyrim, I'm mixing in a little bit of both. Because they're similar to me. Uh, you know, I enjoyed the world in both of them. I do think that there was a lot to do. Um, but, you know, the fantasy vibes that I got from it, big fan. Big fan of Elder Scrolls and Skyrim. If I had to choose one over the other, I would say Elder Scrolls. So I think that there was a lot. Like, there was just too much to do in Skyrim. Like, every time <laughs> you felt like you well, were which, getting something done, you really weren't. Yeah, so which, you're talking Elder Scrolls Online? Online, yeah. Okay. Elder Scrolls okay. Online. Which I think was sort of like a amalgamation of all the worlds. It's been a long time since I've played. Um, I think it was like one of the last ones that you and I played. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know I played with you. I played with Con. Played with George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back when George wasn't flying planes. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's that's coming into my number five. So we can quickly move into number four if you would like to. So what do you have for four? Uh, for number four, I actually have. Uh, the Mushroom Kingdom from Mario, and I see on your list that you have the same <laughs> listed, so maybe we could quickly talk about why. You have, <laughs> you have, you have Mushroom Kingdom within Mario, I just have Mario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on in the Mario universe, Mario world. Uh, whether it's back on like the DS, the original Nintendo... Uh, if you played it on like Xbox, PlayStation, whatever the case is, I feel like everybody knows Mario. They know Luigi. They've been just submerged in, like, or immersed in the world yeah. with Bowser, Peach. Like, because it, it, here's the thing: is like Mario, it expands into multiple games with multiple characters that are even outside of the Mario mm -hmm. realm, right? Um, so, you know, you're connected to those characters and the universes in more ways than one. And we've all been there. I mean, especially with Mario Kart, dude. I mean, that's where oh, basically uh, yeah. it all started for me. Yeah. Um, my, for me specifically, I, the first like Mario game that I truly finished, like explored everything, did everything was Mario Sunshine on the GameCube. And, uh, that took place on, I think it was called Isle Delfino. And that... It was like that tropical, super beachy vibe, and it was like like kind of a goofy game. And I know it's kind of looked back on as a goofy game, but that one for me was like sort of actually what kind of spurred on a lot of my creative ideas for some of the stuff we're building now with the the tropical aesthetic. So 
you know, those, you know, beyond that Mario game, there's just so many, yeah, like, that's pretty much a lot of people's first experience with gaming was with some form of Mario. Like you said, Mario Kart, I think the first one I actually really played was Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Um, I think that's what it was called. And that one, you know, that's sort of like the introduction. And then they've done so many since. Um, but I think they're all great. You know, they're, yeah, there's they're, not a they're bad not Mario game though. out there, uh, in my personal <laughs> opinion. Yeah, no, no, Mario is fantastic. But it is still our number four. So we got three more to go, each of us. Uh, so would you like to... Actually, let me do my number three. Sure. And then we'll segue into yours. So my number three is Grand Theft Auto. The world in which Grand Theft Auto, is, for some people, you know, the vision has been blurred between reality and video games. Um, but I love GTA. And I love the fast cars. I love flying planes. I love, you know, being reckless. And that the virtual city with a bunch of friends. Um, you know, I, we would always we would always just like try to get into the the military base to steal planes uh you know you would fly in parachute in or you would you know get up on the mountain as high as you could try to ramp in um you would ramp over the fence so i i just have fond memories of gta but there's a lot to do right yeah and i'm hoping i'm hoping now that gta 6 is like it's been in the works for a while mm-hmm. and they finally came out and said that I'm hoping that it is a lot bigger. There's just more to do. Yeah. Right. I, I you know, I think like GTA five, the city was good. The city was uh, very fun, but then you, you get out to like the boondocks and there's just nothing to do there. <laughs> um, so as far as like the, the story goes though, like I wasn't, I wasn't, I thought the story dragged out a little bit. I wasn't too big of a fan of no. the GTA five story, but the world in general, because it, I, I'm more of a fan of like being able to do whatever you mm-hmm. want. Um, you know, you can fly planes if you want to. You can go in just adventure. So that's why GTA comes into my number three. How about you? Your number three? My number three is the Halo franchise. And again, I mean, I know that's a big one for a lot of people, but for me, you know, the first one came out when I was ten years old, and I can just I still remember, like when you land. And you look and you can see the arc going up. Like you're on the halo and you can see the halo like in the horizon. I thought that was just the coolest thing. And uh, the way that they pulled off all the different biomes and all the different like styles of levels within that. I just, I mean, that's a formative experience for me. And I think, again, for a lot of other people that have played games, it's just like there's so many memorable levels in Halo that yep it's just you know it's it's incredible it's, it's a real shame paramount had to come along and fuck it up <laughs> real shame oh uh, that, that'll be an episode on its own i think we're not going to get into it now <laughs> because you know i just take it out of my brain like i'm in harry potter just wisp the memory <laughs> away um but that's why it's my number two right halo, halo is my number two for the sake of what halo actually is not what paramount believes it to be right uh because i I mean, Eric and I can sit here right now. We've seen reviews, the episode. Like, it's, oh, dude, it's so sad. It's it's sad, quite honestly. Pathetic. It is. It is. It's sad. Um, but let's talk about why you why it's good for you. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm all up in arms. I'm ready to go. Uh, well, I, yeah. So the universe in general, playing as Master Chief, like through his eyes, seeing what the universe was, and you know, in the beginning. And you play along to build up through the universe to what, like, you know, you, you see it really evolve. And that's why I became, like, a huge like a huge player and a huge fan of the Halo universe. Is because, to Eric Winger saying, like, th- it's not just one, like, biome, right? Like, there's so much to explore. And you're always in, like, some story. And the story will reference story that's, like, in the past or in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, like, there's always a lot going on. I feel, and a lot of connections made throughout the different um, the different biomes, you know, obviously the different characters, but I just felt like there's a lot to explore, and I think that they really did a very good job with, like, the you know, the all forms of enemy types. Mm-hmm. Um, again, <laughs> Paramount didn't. They, wow. they only believe that there's one. <laughs> there's one. <laughs> uh, 
there's one enemy in uh, the Halo TV series, but as you play the games, you realize that there's just more than elites. So we don't need to talk about that anymore, <laughs> though. Uh, that's my number two. Halo is my number two. The smile you see right now on camera is fake because <laughs> that's a terrible show. Uh, how about your number two, dude? Uh, my number two is a recent one. Um, just in the last month or so, I played through all of Elden Ring uh, from Soft's latest game, and the I've talked with some people about this, and the one thing I always come back to saying is the experience I had in experiencing that world for the first time was something that was just incredibly powerful to me like it takes me back to the first time i experienced some of like my favorite games from growing up like you just remember like every single moment every little checkpoint you do every little new place you discover was just mind-blowingly well done and it's gorgeous that game is beautiful so that's my number two um at first glance i read that as the land before time i don't know why (laughs) But I was like, okay, now we're off topic. Um, but yeah, the land little between Littlefoot, yeah, Sarah, Petri, yeah, Sarah, who Ducky, oh, shoot, dude, what's the other one? Ducky and uh, I uh, Spike. What's the Spike? <laughs> we're way off topic now. Yeah, the land between, um, not the land before. So we can get into our number ones. With that said. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like to close it up? Sure. I will take off with, and I'll try to keep it short and sweet because I could talk about this forever, but my number one is Azeroth from World of Warcraft or the Warcraft franchise, I guess. Um, you know, I first experienced that game when I th- was 14 and I've played it on and off ever since. And to me, the thing that they did best with that game and that franchise for the most part it it could be argued that in the last couple years it's been a little bit shaky but the world felt like its own character and i think that for me was just something i hadn't really experienced before and like spending time there was so incredible there was so much stuff that like you didn't know you would wander into a zone and get absolutely smacked by something and you're like, oh, well, I guess I can't go there. So you find new ways to like explore. And it, I don't know, it was just, it's always been something that I think has been incredibly well done and uh, incredibly memorable. So I'll try and curtail it there, put a hard stop because <laughs> I could talk for hours about it. Oh, yeah, dude, that was like one of the first things I noticed down in your, your nerd cave was the statues the wow statues Mm -hmm. the posters oh yeah um yeah but again like the outside of the virtual world what you can connect with in the physical the physical world such as the statues the posters um just memorabilia in general like that helps just to make the experience 10 times better definitely so while you know activision and blizzard are battling their own demons uh, for you know a certain other a mm-hmm. few other things that we had talked about in the Microsoft acquisition uh, uh, episode, you know that aside, yes, WoW does did and probably hopefully will continue to have amazing content yeah. for all of its players definitely. So because I know like you're definitely not the only one that has lost themselves um, or want to immerse themselves in the WoW universe. Right. Yeah. It's 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 just. Really well done. So, uh, right. Let's hit your. So I'm gonna take one. a little bit of different approach, right? Yeah. So, well, yours was um, it was a universe within a game. Mine is a whole game, and we, you know, getting back to GTA a little bit. I love open world concepts. I love adventuring. I am about as creative as uh, I don't know a stick, <laughs> but you know, mine. <laughs> my number one is Minecraft. I love Minecraft. Big fan of Minecraft. It's always I think it's because it's so simple and it allows me to just not really think. Um, so, you know, I can go and build whatever I want to. I can explore blocky biomes, whatever the case is. Like, I can go get it done. I, it's, it is like the 
it's probably the most time I've ever spent in a video game. Uh, it's definitely been Minecraft. I don't know if, um, you know, I don't know if that, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know if that's uh, good or, or bad. I, I know that there are a lot of universes to explore out there, a lot of games to explore. But Minecraft, because of its simplicity, and I, and I really think, I really think that when Microsoft acquired uh, Mojang, mm-hmm. I think that that was a step in the right direction for Minecraft. Um, they've put out good content. You know, I, I haven't really seen too many bad things come from the Minecraft side of things. It's also because like they've been pumping out more content, mm-hmm. um, and I, I'm a big fan of that. You know, if you if you can, they, they they got to the point where I think that they were continuing to grow. I mean, Minecraft's always been growing. I don't know if it's ever had a declining year. It may have. I don't know. Somebody fact yeah, check me on yeah. that. I no idea. But you know, they you know they may have ran out of, or they may have basically needed to let it go like they, they nurtured it enough but they needed more resources more power behind what the game could continue to be uh, so I, I do think that that was the right move um, in terms of the Microsoft piece but yeah Minecraft is definitely my number one yeah the the creativity that the creativity flow that I get from it because you could be you could be in a snow biome all of a sudden you take a, <laughs> a trip down a stream or you walk a few hundred blocks and you're in a different biome mm-hmm. and you can continue to, um, you can continue to be creative in, in more aspects than one. So yeah, big fan. I think the biggest strength of that game is the fact that you can go in by yourself and like you are in a totally untouched, unseen before world. You know, with the way they do procedural generation, like you know, when you start up a new survival or creative or whatever it is, you're always seeing something new, and like. Yep. You may find a place to build in one game or server that you start up, and it's just, like, the most perfect spot ever. So you capitalize on it. And I know playing with you and your brother the one time starting a creative game, and we walked for, like, tens of thousands of blocks trying to find the perfect spot. I st- yeah, you gotta build in the right spot. <laughs> But yeah, I know I, I I think that's a great pick because I think it's like the world is different for everyone and that's a good thing. There's two types of people: the people that spawn and start building right away in the in the local area, and the ones that just wander forever, you know, looking for the spot to build in. Separates the men from the boys, you know. Cause we did hike. We hiked for a few days, if not a week, uh, in real time. Looking for I the right know. Spot. It wasn't like get on for two hours, just see how things are in the local area. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's one of my prouder moments. It's not <laughs> a brag by any point, <laughs> but but yeah. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this episode with all of this inspiration in mind for Eric and myself. You know, we're excited to continue to build our own worlds, starting with Stormwind Sales. That's been a hell of an experience, and you know, we're happy to be moving in the direction that we are. Um, especially with when we when we did the episode before about the creative process and where Storm Our Sales started to where it is now, um, you know, looking at where that game started for our own reference to what the final version was, the just the way that we grew from beginning to end is amazing. If you haven't seen the before and afters, be sure to check out that episode, um, or you can see it on our social media platforms as well. If you would like to support us on Patreon, you can become part of the Patreon community. You can get access to development journals and so much more. You can do that. We'll have the link in the description as well. As mentioned before, you can follow us on social media at nebulos underscore ENT to stay up to date with our latest development. Above all, remember that there is a story in all of us, but it's up to you to choose how you write yours. Have a good night.